The City of Gold and Lead, The Tripods, Volume 2 by Jonathan Christopher. Overview. We left Will and his two friends, spoilers, finding the resistance of the White Mountains, but now the job is to do just that. Resist. The best way to do this is on the inside of one of the dome cities where the occupants of the tripods live. To do so, another dangerous journey of travel and competing in Olympic-type games occurs. Only the best of the best get to serve in these cities. There is no story of resistance against the tripods, only what Will and his friends have done. It is, is it even possible to resist the might of the tripod? Review. The second book in the series expands the story and reveals some of the secrets kept in the first book. While not planned as part of the series, the first was such a hit, along with a TV series in the UK, that the author produced two sequels and a prequel. An interesting note is in the preface that uh, even though it's called the Tripod series, the author didn't realize that he borrowed the tripods designed from Wells' War of the Worlds alien craft until it was about to be published. Uh, You know, I don't really buy the story, but I also don't see what the big deal is with it. Call it an homage to how creepy the tripods are. Another thing that the sequel does that could be said to be a negative was reveal a lot of the hidden details from the first book. Are the tripods alien in origin, or are they uh, sentient mechanical machines, or are there men inside? What do the caps do? To what extent do the tripods have in contact with them? How was Earth conquered, and when? A lot of the details are fleshed out that the reader may have enjoyed not knowing. But if you want to jaunt on of the story, then the book picks up almost at the end of the first book. Will and company are still in the focus, and they're training for some of the games that are used by humanity to see who will go to the Tripod City and serve them. A small group of rebels will go under disguise in hopes of getting intelligence for the rebels to use. So the three characters need to be chosen by the rebels to represent in the games. Then they have to win the games, then they have to get into the city, then they have to survive and get out and back to the rebels. Obviously, there's no drama or action that will be had. No spoilers here, of course. The plot moves along well in the young adult novel. It's interesting to see the pacing for something written in the 1970s versus today. The pacing is done well again, and with the usual action, tension, and release that lends to a good read. There are setbacks and hurdles, both physical and psychological, that must be overcome or faced. There's another good part of the book, especially one from a first-person point of view. Our main character, Will, is starting to see his youthful faults, faults, and he struggles to try and overcome them. The character growth uh, follows the main plot of the espionage in an interesting way that parallels each other and plays into both parts of the storytelling. There are areas where one may feel like an exposition dump is happening, but the setup for it is plot-specific, so there's no, as you all know, happening here. Just an aside, there's one element of the story that made me shudder, thinking back to my reading of Octavia Butler's Dawn, book which I thought was one of the worst sci-fi books I've ever read. While I don't believe the sexual aspect of that is to be conveyed here, and thus safe for the youth to read, it was a scary feeling that I might have to relive the trauma of reading that story again. For those wishing to want more details of the mystery and continue the story of Will and his rebellion against the tripods, I believe this would be enjoyed. Final grade, B.